God is good, and today guys, we're going to talk about Amazon Studios as they enter into the MMO space in just a couple of months from time it's recording with New World. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest, this isn't a game I'm like super excited about, I'm not like over the moon about it, but it's a new MMO, it's coming out fairly soon, and of course I've got to dive in to see what it's all about so I can report it to you guys. Let's talk a little bit about what New World is so you can decide if this is something you're interested in or if it should be on your radar or not. In my opinion, if you're dying for an MMO and you're just thirsty for one, then probably New World's a no-brainer because it's upcoming, it's from a big studio, why not give it a shot while we wait on our actual MMO, Pantheon, Camelot Unchained, whatever the case may be. So guys, let's talk about New World. So it's coming out on August 25th of this year. It was supposed to already be out, but the, what we're looking at now is August 25th. Now, if you want in, if you pre-ordered the game, you do get access to closed beta, which begins on July 23rd. So just a little bit over a month from now, you can get in on closed beta if you want the game costs 40 bucks. There is no monthly fee, but it does have a cash shop. What the cash shop is, I'm not 100% sure. Could be the downfall of the game, or maybe not. But they're going for a model where you buy the game and play the game, basically. New World is kind of an anomaly in my opinion. It's kind of a bizarre MMO, and I've struggled with making a video about it, because I was like, eh, is it really an MMO? Uh, is this a survival game? Well, it's kind of both. So the reason I think it does still qualify as an MMO is because the servers host over 1,000 people. So yeah, that's pretty massive, and it's definitely going to be popular. Everybody's going to want to at least check it out, and if the game is solid, I think they could have a, a long-running game here. You know, this game is a big deal because it's Amazon Amazon's first big PC game release, in my opinion, it's an MMO, and ex expectations are kind of high. Now, the thing that makes this game so different is that it does take place in our world, right? It's kind of this alternate history kind of thing. So it's this colonial type period, but you have magic. So it's like our world, but a little bit more fantasy. It's very action based with active combat. You're gonna have to aim, you're gonna have to dodge around and use blocks and play whack-a-mole with other people, that kind of combat system. Now there's also this interesting PVP structure, right? At first they were gonna do open PVP. That was the original plan. I think they tested it and were like, oh heck no, we can't do that. So they changed their mind about it. Now it's more of a territory system. So you can capture territories and then, uh, from what I understand, it's kind of like a, you capture a territory, you and your guild, or something like that, and then other guilds can contest that, and it will put up a timer of some sort, and then on a specific time, there'll be like a 30-minute siege where they, you, you hash it out, right? And, and to balance that and make sure the bigger guild doesn't always win, it's only 50 versus 50, so if one guild has 150 players, the other has 200, they have to select which 50 goes into that siege battle, so it's even odds, 50 versus 50, which is interesting. I can imagine the knights going to war and coming forth victorious if the game is good. It's It reminds me of EVE Online, right? Like, it reminds me of, like, they're finally, actually, somebody's trying to do a medieval version of EVE Online, sort of. But of course, if you're not interested in PvP, you can avoid all that and just run around and do PvE. So basically, in the PvE, you're going to run around this island, which has all these minerals that are magical. Some of them are powerful and good. Some of them are corrupt and corrupt things. And of course, it's going to be full of monsters. And there's lots of these old ruins from this civilization, this mysterious civilization that had already been here. And they're guarded by these corrupt, creepy, undead type creatures that are enhanced by the corruptness magic, I'm assuming. And that's kind of all we know about the story so far. It, it, that's, that's all they've given us so far. So let's talk a little bit about housing in the game. So apparently once you reach level 20, you can get a house in a settlement. So I would assume you want to join a guild that already has a settlement, and then you can put a house in there, or join a settlement already established, and that's where you'll res your character will respawn if you die. It's also a fast travel location, and now your house isn't it's kind of instanced, right? So many players can own that same house on that same plot of land. But of course, when you go into your version of that house, it'll be yours that you've customized with furniture and decorations, all that kind of thing. So similar to something like 
Black Desert, except for Black Desert doesn't have settlements, or something like EverQuest 2, something of that nature. And of course, you can invite some, you can invite people in to, to hang out your house, but I think there's a cap on that. I don't think you can invite like 100 people in your home. I think you can only invite uh, four or five people to come in and check out your house or what have you. Now, you're allowed to have more than one home. You're only allowed one at level 20, then you're allowed another one at level 40, another one at level 60, allowing you to have up to three houses, so that'd be three fast travel locations that could be in three separate settlements, which is what would probably be the smartest thing to do. Now, as far as combat goes, it's action based and so enemies have hitboxes and you're gonna have to hit the hitboxes right so you have to aim you have to roll out of the way you're gonna have to block with timing and the leveling is just leveling up in a typical MMO fashion and as you level up you'll be able to uh, put your allocate stats however you see fit, strength, endurance, all that kind of thing. Now, there is skilling up, too, with different weapons, right? So, it's kind of got this these muskets. You could grow your proficiency with that and skill it up, or swords, or whatever it is you want to do. And then you'll get more passive, stronger with that particular weapon. And then, of course, it has a tree, a mastery tree, that you're going to use to, you know, decide what attacks you do. Is it, you know, a spinning attack that does AoEs, or a spread burst with the gunfire, or what have you. And you can set up to three weapons at any time so that you can switch between those and decide what you want to use and bounce around with the three weapon types that you've chosen for, that, for your character. There's going to be crafting, there's going to be gathering, and I assume at this point that the crafting will take place in a settlement. I'm assuming there will have to be a tiered place for you to do those, especially at a high tier, so it makes the settlements a little bit more important. And as far as the magic goes, best I can tell, this is based off of your actual weapon. So if you have a staff, maybe it's a fire staff, shoots fireballs, maybe it's an ice staff that shoots out icy mist. I don't know, something like that though. Although we haven't seen much in the way of that, I assume that when we enter in a closed beta, everything should be in place and we should be able to find out more. But best I can tell, they have said it's item based, so that's what I would assume that that means. So the game is gonna be available on Amazon as well as Steam. That's what they're saying right now. I don't think that's going to change because it's already up on Steam with the release date. And of course, you can buy it on Amazon as well, obviously, since it is a game made by Amazon Studios. Of course, their official site has some information. I think I've probably covered more than their official site actually has, but you can go there and check out more information. Of course, you can check out Steam. has some information on it as well. But let's talk a little bit about some of the survival things, right? Because I did say it's kind of a survival game. So you have to eat, you have to drink, you'll die if you don't. You can also heal yourself, and I assume, like, regenerate faster, right? So your, your health can recover quicker, if you've got a good meal, and the better the meal, the quicker it will recover. But also, they're adding, a, you know, some food has other stats too, like it increase your strength or your constitution. Different foods will do different things, something we've probably grown accustomed to with MMOs. So you could just eat just to survive and eat some berries you picked in the bush, or you could actually go and make or find somebody who makes actual recipes, and there's quite, it looks like there's quite a bit of them. Uh, you know, I've seen all kinds of different fish and uh, steak and eggs and berries and uh, squash roasted, all kinds of stuff. So lots of options as far as that goes. And also, because in the PvP you can tear things down, like the fort, you have to go in, you take certain points, I think there's three of them, and then you can go inside and you gotta, uh, you know, get the flag in the middle, which will obviously have like a PvE boss there, and plus all the people uh, there will be obviously protecting that because they don't want to lose their territory. So with the destruction, I would assume that there's also building. So, you know, if you defend it, there will still be damage after the war is over and you'll need crafters to kind of build that back up and replace the walls, etc. and prepare for the next time somebody wants to invade. Now, it looks like they want this to be kind of a an event. In other words, you can't just be constantly being attacked all the time. Someone can declare war on you, then you've got so much time to prepare before the war actually starts on both sides. The, the defenders and the offensive people will have time to get ready for that before they go in and fight. But that is, I think, going to end up being part of it is actually building these areas where people can make homes 
as well as repairing after a war. And like I said, there will be a gap of time in between people being able to do that to you, so it's not just constant. So, that's pretty much the information on New World as far as we know right now. Now, it comes out in a couple of months at the time it's recording on August 25th. You got a choice to make. Are you going to play? And if you are going to play, do you want to get in on closed beta? And another thing I want to say before this video ends, for people who are looking forward to this game, please keep your expectations in check. This is an MMO. It is a new one. Launches tend to be very rough. The servers tend to blow up. People end up having lots of queue times and not being able to play sometimes for the first week after launch. That's fairly typical. So I hate to hear when I'm reading in forums that people have requested their vacation time that they worked so hard for or something of that nature and then they don't get to even do what they took the vacation time for. So please, as usual with the launch of an MMO, please keep your expectations in check. I do hope they have a smooth launch. I wouldn't count on it. I think no matter how many people they're planning to actually play the game, I think on launch day and the surrounding days afterwards, just because it's a new MMO, it's going to literally blow up their servers. So many people are going to be piling into the game just because it's new, just because we're thirsty and we want that new MMO. So please, everybody watching this video, just keep your expectations in check and don't do anything too silly that you're going to regret. Because it's very likely that when it launches, you won't even get to play for a while, okay? But it is Amazon. They do own most servers in the world. I mean, the most stable, some of the most stable, arguable servers in the world. So maybe maybe if anybody could pull it off it would be amazon as far as money's concerned or resources but we'll see how that goes guys i hope you enjoyed the video today if you're new here please consider subscribing and of course also guys you can join the channel and help support this channel which is what keeps the lights on keeps me in business and making videos for you guys to consume so please consider doing that you can do that as low as one dollar 99 cents per month and become an official member with lots of perks you can check out the perks by clicking join right down below and of course guys until next time god bless and happy gaming please listen to what i say i've been making videos all day my friends all say I'm It's a video buffet You can even hit replay But please just subscribe I can't even describe Being part of my tribe I'll even offer you a prize But just please just subscribe And hit the bell notification too